We're switching to swimming now on Eagle Classics, beginning with a big upset dual meet win for the Eagle women. The team has an all-time dual meet winning percentage close to 75%, and in 2017, Bridgewater knocked off an Emory and Henry team that had placed second in the ODAC the previous three years. Good afternoon and welcome to the Nininger Hall pool for the second of three home meets this season for Bridgewater Four, if you count a 10-year alumni meet, which will be held next Saturday, January 21st at 10 a.m. If any alumni watching this have not registered yet or have not seen that, we'll, we have an article online on BridgewaterEagles.com with all the details as Bridgewater celebrates 10 years of varsity swimming next year. The Eagles will be adding a men's program. That news was also announced this season. Women in their 10th year have racked up a dual meet record of 58 and 22, a winning percentage of 725, so have been very successful over that time. Eagles today welcoming Emory and Henry. 2-0 in meet so far. They've placed second in the conference the last few years behind Washington and Lee. And then Hollins, who's 4-2 and 1 in their dual meet schedule. So three teams with solid records, although of course dual meet records ultimately don't mean a whole lot when it comes time to the conference meet. But Bridgewater will have some tough competition with Emory and Henry, who's been near the top of the conference the last few years. So the Emory and Henry meet in the first year that I was a coach here in January of 2017. Um, heading into that meet, we knew that Emory and Henry was a really strong team. They had two um, NCAA qualifiers from the previous year, and they had, had some individual conference champions. And so coming into that meet, we knew they were a strong team. And, but we also knew that we had a lot of depth. And so I talked to my team about using this as a confidence builder for us as we headed into ODAX the next month. And we really sat down and took a look at the lineup. And um, we wanted to match our depth to um, you know, their small but mighty team. In lane four with Jessica Richardson, Kayla Nolte, Brianna Chesick, and Olivia Anson making up that relay team. Eagles next in lane three, they have Kelly Hilliker, Jenna Walmer, Emma Daw and Emily Carr on their A team. And those top relay teams from the Wasps and the Eagles still 1 2 in lanes 3 and 4. Third leg is into the pool. Still looking like Emory and Henry won Bridgewater two. As the Wasp set to send it to the final leg. A Bridgewater in the pool as well. Have a distance event next up, the 800 meter freestyle. As Emory and Henry 25 meters away, Bridgewater making the final turn as well. And the Wasps will win the opening relay in a time of 206.69. Bridgewater touching up as well, 212.90. For the Eagles' top team, again, that was Hilliker, Walmer, Da, and Carr. All right, so when we sat down that morning of the meet and we scored, we had the heat sheet, and we scored uh, based on swimmers' times that far, thus far in the year, um, we were to be, we were to lose the meet 134 to 124. And we scored it all out. Um, this is a piece of paper that I still proudly have in my office, and I told that team that I would always keep this piece of paper because I was so proud of their effort. Um, and so we, we scored it out and we pointed out areas where we really felt like we could pick up points. Um, and, and all we had to do was flip a couple races. So in swimming, if you finish one place higher than maybe you were projected, you pick, you, not only do you pick up a point, but the opposing team loses that point. So, um, you know, we, 10 points might sound like a lot, but we really didn't have to do a whole lot to flip this. The, the 
looks like Hilliker leading. Ahead of Carr with Walzak in third in this heat. Hilliker now coming back, although likely will not score points. There's Hilliker heading back in the third of four laps, followed by Carr, and now Walzak coming across your screen. Hilliker makes the turn 50 meters to go. Now Carr making the turn. Here is Hilliker, a sizable lead in this first of two heats. And there's Carr. Hilliker heading back on her final length. We'll get the times for you in just a moment. Hilliker will finish in 222.19. Carr will be next. Carr, also a sophomore, finishing in 234.63. And then Walzak, the Eagle freshman, finishes in 244.70. And our final heat of the 200 meter freestyle in lane one from Emory and Henry, Taylor Simmons. In lane two from Hollins, Alex Sanchez. In lane three from Bridgewater, Delaney Burgett. In lane four from Emory and Henry, Savannah Scarborough. In lane five from Hollins, Kaylee DiPietro. And in lane six from Bridgewater, Olivia Heeb Wade. Again, DiPietro just swimming the 800 freestyle. She did have that 10 minute break in between but swimming two events back to back that total a thousand meters. And there's the horn. Third event of the day. Emory and Henry has won both thus far. Bridgewater has finished second in both. It might have actually been Heeb Wade who was in first through the first 25 meters along with Scarborough. So a quick start for the Bridgewater freshman, Heeb Wade, who 50 meters in does appear to have maybe an incremental lead over Scarborough. Now Scarborough may be overtaking her on this length. Three athletes all close to third place, Simmons, Sanchez, and Burgett all very close to each other. Still Heeb Wade and Scarborough. Good swim so far for Heeb Wade. She hits the midway point. One, one ten on the clock for both Heeb Wade and Scarborough at the midway point of this race. Still three athletes tightly bunched in third place, although it does appear to be lane two. That's Hollins' is Alex Sanchez in third. Still a close race between Scarborough and Heeb Wade. So two leaders will have 50 meters to go. Scarborough with the slightest of leads. You'll see on your screen now how close it is. Scarborough pulling ahead just a bit on Heeb Wade. It looks like she did open up a bit of a gap on that 25 meters. 
coming for home now. Scarborough likely to win, but a good swim from Heb Wade again. The Eagles taking second for the third time in three events. Scarborough winning in 224.72. Heb Wade within two seconds, 226.47. It is Hollins is Alex Sanchez in third, 233.26. Fourth place going to Delaney Burgett from Bridgewater, 236.16. Fifth place, 240.81. That is Taylor Simmons from Emory and Henry. And then DePietro on her second straight race, finishing in 251.34. Next up, event six will be the 200 meter butterfly. Bridgewater will get a win in this event because they have the only swimmers in this heat. Three Eagles competing, Jenna Walmer lane two, Jordan Back lane three, and Caitlin Lacey in lane four. Those are the only three entrants in the 200 butterfly. On the first length, all three. packed up together, making the first turn. Very little separating the three. If I had to guess, it would be, well, now Lacey. I was going to say Jordan back, but it looks like Lacey in the lead. but all three setting almost the exact same pace through the first 50 meters. Switch the underwater camera, you'll see how close it is. Almost on the same stroke, at least back and Lacey, a mirror image of each other. So it appears to be Lacey one, back two, Walmer three, but it's close. Clock at 126. It is Walmer in third. Hard to tell between back and Lacey. See back in Lacey there again, almost on the same stroke pattern. Really a mirror image of each other as they go by. Now Lacey making that turn a little better, and Lacey has opened up a lead almost instantaneously. Lacey, who already had to swim a grueling 800 free where she set a fast pace early on to try to keep up with eventual winner Jordan Greenberg. And now coming back to the pool, we'll swim the 200 fly. And this time she has not dropped off her pace. She's picking it up, opening up a gap here over the final 100 of the, of the race. It's still back in second, Walmer in third, but Caitlin Lacey opening up a big lead Heading for home. You see the gap there between Lacey and back. And now Walmer coming into your screen. Three Eagles were separated by probably less than a second halfway through the race. But a big kick from Lacey. And Lacey will win in 306.49. Here's back 310.72. And not far behind them is Jenna Walmer, 315.57. So Caitlin Lacey providing Bridgewater's first event win of the day, 306.49 in the 200 fly. Our next race will be the 50 meter freestyle, two heats. Heat one will have Hollins, Lucene, Manjinkian in lane two, and then Haley Saunders and Kelly Hilliker from Bridgewater in lanes three and four, respectively. So again, something 
clearly some sort of training plan going on with some of the Eagles athletes, including Hilliker, swimming for the second time as an exhibition, trying out some different events. But surely set to be a contender in backstroke events come conference meet time. Just one lap here in the 50 free. Hilliker has the lead. Hilliker. in first, Saunders in second, and then Manjikian swimming for the second time in three events with a little rest time in between. Hilliker's time, 29.64, Saunders 34.06, Manjikian 37.37. .37. And our second heat will include two swimmers from each school, Taylor Simmons from Emory and Henry, lane one, Alex Sanchez from Hollins, lane two, Taylor Berard from Bridgewater, lane three, Kia Hamilton from Emory and Henry, lane four, Deborah Hankey from Hollins, lane five, and Gina Young from Bridgewater, lane six. Looks like Eagles Swimmer is getting new caps this season with the 10-year swimming team logo they had designed and their names. The names will certainly come in handy. Comes to our staff identifying photos. You can't really see them in the pool from here on the stream. And here we go in the 50 free. That seems to be Emery and Henry with the lead over in lane four. That's Hamilton. Although actually lane five, Deborah Hankey from Hollins with a chance. It's gonna be Hamilton and Hankey. It's gonna be close. And it goes to Hamilton, 30.42. And actually, excuse me, I missed Bridgewater, Taylor Burrard in the mix as well. She gets second in 30.88, just four hundredths of a second ahead of Hankey, 30.92. I apologize to our Eagles viewers. I thought from my view it was Hamilton and Hankey, but Taylor Burrard sneaking in there in second place, edging Hankey by four hundredths of a second. The lap cards are out as we will head to the 400 freestyle. Similar heat to what we saw in the 800, but we will not have the winner from that race, Jordan Greenberg from Emory and Henry. She swam instead just recently in the 200 backstroke, winning that as well. So a chance for the Eagle swimmers, and there will be three of them. Laurel Glover, who was second in the 800 free, will be swimming in lane three. Caitlin Lacey next to her in lane two. Lacey finished third in the 800 free, although was in second early on, set us a strong pace trying to keep up with Greenberg. Also representing the Eagles, Delaney Burgett in lane six. Emery and Henry will have Lauren Blakey in lane four. Hollins will have Kaylee DiPietro in lane five. I mentioned earlier, Glover and Lacey rank 11th and 12th in the ODAC in the 1650 free so far this season. Burgett with some good swims as well, a solid distance crew for Bridgewater. There's the horn and the 400 free. Bridgewater with one event win so far today, which came from Lacey in the 200 fly. And now Lacey and Glover will have a chance here. Looks like Glover out ahead, Burgett as well. Burgett over in lane six on the far side. She's in second, it appears. Glover in first. And actually Lacey there as well. 
Looks like Bridgewater might be swimming one, two, three. I think they are. Berger got out to a strong pace. He's probably the leader for the first length and a half or so. It is Bridgewater, one, two, three. Two Eagle swimmers are on the near side. Lacey in lane two, the leader Glover in lane three, and then over on the far side in lane six, left side of your screen now is Delaney Burgett. Those are your top three, and they are pulling away a bit. It is Glover in the lead. Emery and Henry currently swimming in fourth with Lauren Blakey. So see your Eagles swimmers going by. That is Burgett way on the far end. Depth perception is a little off with that underwater camera. You're gonna see the nearer side lanes, the lower numbered lanes first. Burgett is in third now, although closer than that screen would have indicated. Strong push now from Lacey. Lacey has pulled almost even to Glover. Glover still with a slight edge. So kind of the opposite of what, what we saw in the 800 where Lacey set the faster pace early on and Glover close strong. This time it was Glover out to a big lead. Now Lacey has reeled her in. Birch is still swimming in third. She's fallen back a bit from the two Eagles leaders. As they come back, there you see Glover in lane three, Lacey in lane two. Glover is still holding on to the lead, but it's close. Just within the last few laps, Lacey made up a bit of a gap. Burgett still in third, still comfortably ahead of Blakey for third place. Kaylee DiPietro in fifth. Clock's at 2.45. See coming onto your screen again is Glover and Lacey. Burgett way over on the far side. Those are your three leaders, Bridgewater went one, two, three earlier today in the 200 fly, although those were the only three entrants. This time we have competitors from the other two schools, Bridgewater still swimming one, two, three. Still Glover in first, still Lacey, probably about a second behind her, and still Delaney Burgett in third. Clock just now about to get to three and a half minutes. Right at about 3.30 right now. There's Glover and Lacey. And then Burgett. Still Glover in first. She may have fended off that move from Lacey a little bit. After about 100 meters, Glover had opened up a significant lead and then quickly Lacey pulled almost even to her. I don't think she ever quite caught her. And now it appears Glover pushing that gap open a bit further. And Lacey with a tough program today. She already provided the Eagles their lone event win in the 200 fly, and she was third in the 800 free and now swimming the 400 free. Long day for her. Glover, who was second in the 800 free, looks set to add an event win here in the 400 freestyle. Blakey is pulled ahead of DiPietro. Glover's about to get the bell. Glover with 50 meters to go. Glover continues to open up that gap on Lacey. Probably leads by five meters or more now. There's Glover and there is Lacey. Glover heading back for the final length, as is Lacey. Burgett comfortably in third place. And here's Laurel Glover to win the second event win of the day for Bridgewater, 517.15. Eagles will go one, two, three. Second place, Caitlin Lacey in a time of 520.71, so she kept it within three and a half seconds, or actually just over three and a half seconds. Burgett has finished, she takes third, 532.64.
as Bridgewater for the second time today goes one, two, three in an event. Next up we will have the final heat of the 100 Butterfly. Five athletes, Hollins, Maya Shatkin in lane two, Jordan Back from Bridgewater in lane three, Olivia Anson from Emory and Henry lane four, Alex Sanchez from Hollins in lane five, and then Emma Daw lane six. The 100 Fly is one of the school records Daw has not gotten yet. That was set by last year's senior Emily Townsend, 111.06. You'd have to think that's within Daw's reach at some point soon in her Eagle career. Not much separating the entire field early on. It is Daw in the lead over on the far side in lane six. Olivia Anson in lane four from Emory and Henry is her challenger. Daw making the turn just ahead of Anson. It's close. 36, excuse me, 33-8 was her split, so she's actually on pace for that record. See how she can close. She's already set meter records in five events as a freshman. Probably expect to see more at the conference meet once they've tapered down, but can she grab one here as well? Clock hitting one minute now. It's gonna be tough, Daw will win. Clock at 107. Bridgewater cheering her on, they know what the record is. She touches 111-3-1. Just misses the record from Townsend. So we sat down, um, I think it was two days before the meet, and we looked at the lineup, and we saw areas where we really um, felt like we could pick up some points for the, for the overall team meet. And we put some people in some off events and really tried to orchestrate the team lineup to our favor. And um, as the meet went along, it, we, we very quickly picked up some points. Um, Kelly Hilliker won the 50 free, which is an off event for her early in the meet. She also won the 200 free, um, which was not a given for us. And then another big win in that meet was Emma Dahl in the 100 fly. So pretty quickly we saw that we were picking up points and we knew that we were gonna um, you know, be pretty close at the end with the final score. But the really neat thing about it is we had a lot of people that maybe weren't winning events and picking up those big points, but really wanting to engage and being part of this team, um, this real big team effort. And we put people in, like for instance, Jenna Walmer, who was typically a breaststroker, uh, she was injured at that time, and, and breaststroke kick was not, uh, she was not cleared for breaststroke, but she swam the 200 fly, which is a very difficult event, and it's, a, it's an off event for her, but it's something that, it's just an example of how our team really wanted to engage, and everybody played a part in this win. For Savannah Scarborough from Emory and Henry, lane five, Jenna Walmer from Bridgewater. So Hilliker, after swimming a couple exhibition events, now swimming in the 400 IM, Daw holds that school record 524.77. Hilliker is leading through 75 meters. Right with Hilliker is Savannah Scarborough. And those two opening up a big lead, Jenna Walmers in third. Hilliker and Scarborough neck and neck a quarter of the way through this race, about 119 for the first 100 meters. So they go to the backstroke. See them coming onto your screen now. Really nothing separating the two. Hilliker led early on. It looks like Scarborough has now pulled ahead but almost identical on the turn. And making the backstroke almost same mirror image, just opposite arms. So Scarborough and Hilliker, nothing to separate them through 150 meters of this 400 IM. Walmer still in third by a wide margin. 
and Hart in fourth. There again is Hilliker and Scarborough. Hilliker appears to have edged ahead. Phoebe Hart going by you on your screen now. Hilliker does have a lead. See, see her coming in a couple meters ahead of Scarborough. Of course, the backstroke is a strength of Hilliker. She holds school records in the 100 and 200 meter backstroke events, and she's used the second half of this backstroke leg to open up a gap on Scarborough. Into the second half of the race, see if Hilliker can hold on to that lead. She opened up over the final 50 meters of the backstroke leg. Bridgewater has actually won the last two events. And I don't have meet scores, I would suspect overall. Every and Henry would be winning that dual meet score, but Bridgewater has won three events, including the last two, looking to make it three in a row. Scarborough is pulling up to Hilliker, though. And actually has edged ahead of Hilliker with 150 meters to go. Still Walmer in third and Hard in fourth. See the gap on your screen, still tight, but Scarborough is ahead. See what Hilliker can do on the freestyle leg. She's made up the most gap on the backstroke, which is her strongest discipline. Into the freestyle now. Scarborough still ahead of Hilliker by less than a second. There they come onto your screen. There's Scarborough and then Hilliker. Scarborough still holding off the Eagles sophomore with 25 meters to go. It's Scarborough in first, Hilliker does look tired now. Scarborough will, excuse me, still 50 meters to go. Got ahead of myself. And now Hilliker with a great turn. Hilliker looked to be tiring in the last lap, but she made a great turn and has pulled dead even with Scarborough, may even be ahead. Here they come. Now Scarborough kicking again. Hilliker giving everything she had on this freestyle. It's going to be very close. Here they come, it is Scarborough to win. 5.36.66, Hilliker in 5.37.01. Excuse me, 5.36.64 was the time for Scarborough, so less than half a second separating Scarborough and Hilliker and denying Bridgewater a third straight event win. To finish off is the 200 meter freestyle relay. Be quick, just one lap for each swimmer. In lane two, Bridgewater is Rachel Kinsey, Haley Saunders, Emma Bashline, and Crystal Walzak. Lane three, Bridgewater with Taylor Burrard, Laurel Glover, Emily Carr, and Jordan Back. Lane four, Emery and Henry, Michaela Nolte, Olivia Anson, Brianna Chesick, and Jessica Richardson. And then lane five, Emery and Henry, Kia Hamilton, Kelsey Jones, Jordan Greenberg, and Lauren Blakey. Emery and Henry with a big lead off that opening lap from Nolte, the All-American swimmer. Bridgewater in second, with Emery and Henry close behind. That's the Bridgewater team in lane three. So, assuming still what we have on the heat sheet, which sometimes changes by the last relay, that was Berard swimming the first leg, and now Laurel Glover swimming the second leg. Strong performance so far by Bridgewater's A relay team. Emery and Henry onto the third leg, which would be Chesick. 
They will finish with Jessica Richardson again, based on what we had at, at the beginning of the meet. Bridgewater still in second in lane three. There you see Chesick going back. Emily Carr for Bridgewater following her in second. Still holding off the Emory and Henry team over in lane five now with Greenberg. The Wasps A team are into the final 50 meters as are the Eagles. Jordan back to finish it off for Bridgewater. There you see Richardson coming back, passing back going the other way and back making the turn as well. Emory and Henry will win this 200 freestyle relay with a time of 131.23. And now Bridgewater finishing 158.65. So in the end, this meet didn't really, it wasn't really anticlimactic. It didn't come down to the last relay. We knew that we just needed to have a legal relay at the end for our team to win the meet. Um, which is maybe different than some of the more exciting meets, um, but, but good on all of our nerves that we knew that that was there. And I, I will always remember this meet because all year long we had talked about confidence and developing confidence and stepping up to the block against um, our competition and being proud of our training and who we were as the Bridgewater Swimming. And this meet was a great stepping stone for our ODAC championships um, about six weeks later where the team um, had, a, had a wonderful meet. We broke all kinds of school records. Um, we had almost 100% lifetime best times in that meet. And, and I really attribute this meet against Emory and Henry uh, to our team's success um, at ODEX that year. And that's the meet today. Bridgewater's second home meet of the season in the books. Again, don't have team scores for you, but check BridgewaterEagles.com soon where complete results and team scores will be posted.